Today we are headed to Vancouver, Washington to go visit several of my very favorite thrift stores that I have been missing since I moved back to Oregon. Before we head to Vancouver, I want to show you what Jesse and I found at a different Goodwill the other night. For a Goodwill date night, Jesse and I decided to go to a Goodwill that we don't go to very often. And as soon as we were in the doors, we started seeing glass everywhere on all of the end caps and all of the shelves. It was just packed with vintage art glass. I found a beautiful blue and green Norwegian mid-century bowl. They had $19.99 on it, which is quite a bit for a Goodwill in our area, but they do retail online for well over a hundred. Next up, I found this amazing hand-blown glass horse head. And I don't know if this is a piece of Murano glass or not. They've got $24.99 on it and I'm gonna grab this guy. There are so many different fun pieces of art glass here. Now I am not an expert at all in art glass and I don't know if some of these pieces are newer made or if a lot of these are actually vintage, but I thought that this was really fun to see so many of these pieces in one location. My guess is that they had these in a boutique or possibly they were even going to be selling them online. And then something made them go ahead and put them in a regular retail location because I've never seen so many pieces all together in one spot before. I found another horse head. This one looks like a black and white striped zebra. I'm gonna get this guy too. Murano and art glass is not really one of our things. It's not something we collect, but it's something we have a very great appreciation for. All I kept thinking when I was looking at shelf after shelf full of this vintage art glass was that somebody who loves art glass is gonna go nuts. So I decided to be nice and only purchase the two cool horse heads and the Norwegian bowl because I felt like if that had been a shelf full of Batosi, I would want to be the one to find it. The horse heads were the ones that spoke to me the most. They kind of look like a wild zebra and a wild horse, and I think they are so unique. And I'm pretty sure that they are authentic Murano, which means that they could be worth up to $600 to $1,000 based on the little bit of research I did online. If any of you out there are experts in Murano and art glass, please comment below and tell me what you think of my horse heads and the other pieces that you saw. I adore these little horses, especially the one that looks like a zebra. Now, I've been doing some research on how to tell if a piece is an authentic Murano. And one of the things was to look for bubbles and imperfections because when they are hand blown, they are gonna naturally have some of those. So there are some bubbles in this piece here. Here's some more in the little striping area too. It definitely has some imperfections. The bottom of this one, it looks like it was smooth flat. So it's impossible to tell if it had the little tip that you're supposed to look for, for when they break the glass connection. And then this one is a little bit different. It does have some imperfections. It does have some little bubbles in there, but the bottom of it is actually rounded a little bit. So I'm gonna pull off this felt here and see, maybe I'll get lucky and maybe there'll be a signature. I started taking the felt off and I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little surprised. There is a piece of tape with a pocket of glitter. I have no idea what that's about, but we're gonna get that off and see what's underneath. I think I figured out why there's the pocket of glitter. Look at this. What? Is that gold? Do you think this is real gold, Jesse? <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Uh, no. You know what I think that is? What do you think it is? Like glitter from Michaels. <laughs> Oh darn. Okay, maybe this is not Murano. I'm not sure why there would be a hole in the bottom of it. This is kind of weird. That's like, maybe it was like a first grader's art project. No, it's not a first grader's art project. Maybe I don't know. know. Maybe that's a technique in Murano. I don't know, maybe. Maybe that's how they get that glitter in there. This looks solid. So this one's definitely solid in there. I 
think. Oh my gosh, I need to go to Murano, Italy and learn how this is done. Oh wait, we are. <laughs> Here's another amazing piece of art glass, and I'm not sure if this one is Murano. This was found at a different Goodwill. It has some large bubbles in the finish, and I did find a piece online that was at least titled Murano glass that had very similar color and design to it. I have seen several Murano pieces that have this type of lip here at the top. And then let's turn this big beast over. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy, by the way. And here is the bottom edge. It looks like they sanded that flat too. So if you are a Murano expert, please let me know what you think. Do you think that these three pieces are Murano? And if not, do you know anything else about them? I'd be so grateful for any tips in the right direction. And for all of you who are Murano fans, I'm going to be taking you to Murano, Italy, and we are gonna tour the glass factory. I am super excited to do this. It's been on my list of things I wish to do for so many years, and I'm very excited to get to take all of you with me. And now for one of my very favorite thrift stores in the world, Retail's Thrift Store. For those of you who might be new here, one of the reasons I love this thrift store is that they color coordinate all of the smalls on the shelf. And so that makes it more fun when you're shopping because look, all the yellow pieces are over here and then you've got all the purple pieces. It just makes shopping so much more fun for some weird reason to me. I'm gonna grab this gorgeous embossed brass bowl. This one's extra large. These make wonderful fruit bowls. And I'm also gonna grab two of these amber glass bottles because I use these for my soap at home. Here is a beautiful piece of vintage Italian pottery. This is a gorgeous hand-painted candle holder and it's only $1.99. I'm only getting started today, but this is already my favorite find of the day. A vintage carved ironwood lion figurine for only $1.99. This shelf is completely full of vintage glass decanters. These typically sell for around $45 to $65. Most of them are priced at only $4.99, so I think I'm gonna grab quite a few of these. Vintage copper pans sell really well. I actually know quite a few people personally that collect them, and it looks like this entire set is only $24.99 for all the pieces. This looks like someone was trying to copy the Batosi Rimini blue pattern, and it looks like a handmade piece. They didn't do a great job on the handle. Let's see if there's any stamps here on the bottom of it. No way. It is a world market piece. It does say made in Italy. That is very, very interesting. A bit disappointing, obviously, because it's not Batosi pottery. That is kind of bizarre. I have never seen this before. This is a 1980s Mikasa pattern. I love all the little speckles. It almost looks like granite. And let's see, this one is called Ultra Stone Gray. And I think that I'm gonna grab these, even if they are all a few dollars a piece, that is still a really good deal. And it's really hard to find a set this size all together. My mother-in-law's name is Marsha, so I'm gonna grab this adorable vintage coffee mug for her. She doesn't drink coffee, but she does drink tea. This will make a cute Mother's Day gift. I love the shape on this Oregon Myrtle wood candle holder. Gonna grab that, it's only $3.99.
This is what you call a happy haul. I'm very happy right now. I've got some really great things. This is why I always tell you this is one of my very favorite thrift stores. Now we're gonna head to a Vancouver Goodwill location and see what we can find in here. With such an enormous family, I don't think it's gonna be possible for me to have too many of these pineapple bowls for when we have our tiki party this summer. So I'm gonna grab this entire set. I cannot believe my eyes right now. I was just looking at an Instagram picture that had almost these identical Onyx bookends and I was thinking to myself, I've got to find these. $12.99 for both of them. They've got a few faint chips on them, but I'm getting them anyways. Retails is one of my very favorite thrift stores and I think it's one of the things that I miss the most about living in Vancouver. So it felt so good to finally get in there and fill up an entire cart full of treasures. I don't know a ton about antique copper, but I know that I love it and I always pick it up when I find it. A lot of times when I come across copper mixing bowls or pots and pans, they are mass produced and they are not the highest quality. But it was really neat to be able to find some pieces that actually had stamps and markings on them so that I knew that they were really good ones. I started going down the Google wormhole researching antique and vintage copper and now I know all about the incredible French pieces that are very valuable and so I'm gonna start keeping an extra eye out for those and hopefully I can come across some more. I already knew when I saw the blue pottery on that shelf that it was not real Batosi. I knew it wasn't real Italian pottery, but I did think that maybe it was a off brand that was still gonna be handmade. I was so sad when I flipped it over and saw that world market stamp on it. I was sad that it wasn't valuable. I was sad that they are now copying designs from the 60s and just mimicking that look but that's the way it works. Almost all new productions are a copy of something from our past. But the 1980s Mikasa dishes, I did pick up that entire set. And if they were not that concrete speckled gray, I would absolutely be keeping those for myself. But they blend too much with our concrete counters in the kitchen. So I'm gonna be selling that set. And I think I stand to make some really good margins. I paid between a dollar and three dollars per piece. And when you look at replacements.com and other comps on Etsy and eBay, which when you add up all the pieces that I purchased, that equals these two numbers. I think I manifested the Onyx bookends, no joke. I'm not kidding because the day before I saw the exact same pair in a different color on a fellow vintage dealer's Instagram and I thought I have got to find some of those. I haven't come across these good Onyx bookends in years. And then the very next day, voila, right there on the Goodwill shelf for me. My life is so crazy busy right now that I can't always do this. But whenever I have time, I really like to get the dishes and the vintage items washed and those tags and markings off of them immediately after I get home from thrifting. It makes such a big difference when those stickers have been on there for weeks and the glue is so hard to get off versus when you just slip them into some warm water with a little bit of Dawn soap and everything just slides right off magically. for vintage barware and it was really fun to be able to find so many of these cut glass decanters in one spot. I'm pretty sure that they all came out of the same house and were donated together. So it's kind of fun to know that this was someone's collection that maybe they collected over a lifetime.
Vintage barware is something that I've always loved and I think it always will sell really well. So it's always a good investment to pick up these pieces. Plus it's fun to decorate with. And since I found all of this, now I can do a little vignette with my vintage bar cart. I am thrilled with this haul today. I can't believe I got all of this from just two stores. I would love to know what you think in the comments below and tell me what you think of my Murano horses. I think they're pretty spectacular. I still don't know if I'm gonna sell them. Maybe I should do a giveaway. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you guys in a brand new episode soon.